I turned off my headlamp to conserve what little battery I had left. The darkness slammed shut on me. At that very moment, I was ensnared by it, as if the darkness was so powerful that I could actually feel it on my skin all around me. And I sat there, in absolute darkness, to gather my thoughts for a bit. I was at a complete loss of what to do. There was no ladder that connected this level to the manway of the upper levels, and there was no way back up the chute. And I had about three days left, I figured. In three days, I would die of dehydration. I then stood up and began walking, very slowly. My hand feeling along the cold stone wall, easing my foot out, step by agonizing step. The absolute darkness made the space seem both smaller and more enclosed, but also more vast. I felt like if I reached my hand out, I would not be able to feel the other side of the tunnel. Sometimes I could, but other times it was just cold and empty darkness. It was no use, though. The tunnels and the walls just seemed to go on forever. My heart raced with every unsure step that I took. The ground was becoming less even, and debris seemed to have become more prevalent. Easing my foot more carefully, I traced out a ledge in front of me. I then kicked some rocks into it. It seemed to only go down a few feet. And then... The smell hit me. It was a familiar smell, but one that I've never come across this deep in a mind. Like, like old death. Stale, mummified carcasses, long dead and dried up, isolated from any natural means of returning its flesh to the earth. It was coming from beyond the ledge before me. My knees began to give out as if my body was physically trying to keep me from going forward. I felt dizzy, intoxicated by the disorienting darkness, exasperated by the fetid stench. I had to turn my headlamp on, if only for a few seconds, and I had to see what that smell was. I then clicked it on. The dying light was so dim that it seemed as though I was looking through smoke, but I could still see them. Bodies. Human bodies. Dismembered in various ways and thrown all about the pit. Skull fragments littered the tunnel from where I just came, like dead leaves on the forest floor. Dried gray skin stretched across silently shrieking skulls, each having an expression of absolute terror. Peek out from legs, arms, and torsos. I tried to back away, but my mind was breaking. Messages were getting all mixed up. My body did not know whether to run or stay put, because I knew there was nowhere to go. I fell on my ass and continued to scoot along the pit, sliding on broken bones as I did. I backed myself up against the wall and put my face in my hands. My sobs turned to screams, then into wretched groans echoing off the walls of this hell. I pulled myself onto my feet and turned away from the pit to find a different route. I kept my headlamp on, though. I couldn't chance not being able to see anything, and I'd be able to move faster with it on. But... It did little to help my disorientation. Nothing looked the same upon a second glance. Parts of the stone wall seemed to move in the beam of my dim light. There were also artifacts here that I would have been thrilled about had the circumstances been different. Tools, tables, and carts. Wait a minute, there's carts. If there's carts, there must be rails leading back to the main shaft. I thought. The rails seem to be gone now, probably pulled up when they closed this mine, but if I look closely at the ground, I can probably find the grooves where they once were and begin to follow them.
I thought. My headlamp seemed to dim with every step I took as I traced along the grooves. Eventually, I had to feel the grooves with my foot. I had silently agreed with myself that if I couldn't make it up or down from the main shaft, I would just jump. I continued to slide one foot along and step with the other until I noticed that my step had become louder. I stopped, and there was another step, close behind me. I slid and stepped, slid and stepped, and then stopped. Another foot fell behind me after I had stopped. Someone was in there with me, and they were following me.